The silver and gold price are taking a beating this morning. We're going to talk about that. Also, we are going to talk about the BRICS and a world gold standard. I dug in deep last night. I've got some very interesting developments, some facts that I think point toward the idea the reality that we could be heading to a world gold standard. I'll talk about that. <clears throat> We're also going to touch on the great taking, a hot topic here on the channel, the documentary that talks about the government taking everything from each and every one of us. I'll give you an update on that as well. But let's talk about the markets this morning. The gold price, I don't even want to look. It's down like $24, $25. Last I checked, silver was down 80 cents per ounce. I'm not saying I told you so because I say a lot of stuff that doesn't come true. But I did warn over the last few days that I felt like we could get a real tamp down in the silver price and the gold price at the beginning of the year. That if there was ever a time when the powers that be that manipulate the silver price and gold price want to tamp it down, it would be during this first week of 2024. And lo and behold, we got that this morning. Okay. The DXY index, the dollar is up. It's about 102.5. People were saying it could break below 100 just a week or two ago. The dollar is getting stronger. Uh, that means when you compare paper, unicorn fart dust, toilet paper, fiat currencies to each other, which is what they're doing with the DXY index. The DXY is the highest quality. It's like Charmin, Charmin Ultra Strong is what the US dollar is. It's the strongest toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> so that's what's the real, We that's nominal. We're talking about real the real value of the dollar will just go back 20, 30, 40 years ago and think about what a $100 bill would buy you at the grocery store as compared to today. Heck, think about toilet paper, right? Here, here's some right here. From our old friend Richard Cooper, who's disappeared. If anybody knows where Richard Cooper is, this is a dollar toilet paper that Richard sent us. That's why the price of silver and gold are down. There's no other way around it. Yeah, the 10-year bond yield is up. I think it was flirting with 4%. Okay. All right, guys, nothing's changed in the big picture. I know it's not been a what I would call pleasant beginning to 2024 for the silver price and gold price, but this is just the second day. <laughs> well, the second day of trading. We got a long year ahead of us. My gut intuition tells me Sometime in February or March, we're going to look back at these difficult days like we're having today and think, Woof, I'm glad we made it through that. Now we're seeing much higher prices in the gold price and silver price. Don the Brain keeps telling me just wait for $2,100 gold. It's going to happen before we know it, okay? Oh, and our friend Bitcoin, which had been, was up like 5%, the last I checked this morning was down like 7%. So even Bitcoin, that wonderful electronic asset, right, is having a rough day. Nothing against the crypto people. Everybody is entitled to uh, believe whatever they like, but I'm just stating that Bitcoin's down. Let's talk, let's talk about the government seizing everything that you own, including maybe your house, your car, your brokerage accounts, your bank accounts. Okay. I watched the documentary. I believe I put a link to it in the description of this video. So after the live stream here, you can go check it out or check it out later. The great taking, I would highly recommend that you, uh, that you watch it. It's this video about how there's laws in place quite possibly that would enable the big, big banks, the big, I don't know, government banks, whatever, they're all in cahoots to take everything that we own. Like I said, cars, houses, um, anything, like things we think we own, like stocks and brokerage accounts, money and bank accounts. Now, I want to point this out. I was skeptical at first, and I'm not saying that I believe in it. I'm, I want to do more research, but I will say that the author of the book, and he was featured in this documentary, is very believable, 
very credentialed, okay? He'd managed billions of dollars of money. He's a very smart, genuine guy, and he's not doing this to make money. He's not making any money off this book, this the great taking, right? The fact, and he's and he's uh, his credentials are really impressive, and he's a very impressive speaker. So check it out for yourself. Make up your own mind. Right, that's what we do. I don't, you know, we. I, I, I'm still kind of in a phase of exploring what's going on with this great taking, but it's very interesting, and um, and and what he points out in this documentary, I think, is well worth your um, absorbing the information synthesize it for yourself we almost got a hundred thumbs up those of you who have not given us a thumbs up we got 250 people on a wednesday that feels like a tuesday please give this a thumbs up it helps get the word out to more people and i will ring the bell at 100 thumbs up because we're going to talk about a world gold standard we got to work our way into this we i've got a ton of very compelling interesting insightful information including from former uh, New York Federal Reserve employees about what is going on in the world. It's going on. It's happening. They're not going to tell you about this on the Children's News Network. That's CNN. They're not going to tell you about this on Fox. They're not going to tell you about this on MS, uh, NBC. <laughs> There's something else I want to call it, but I won't because this is a clean show. No, but I'll tell you about it here, and we'll get a feel for what's really going on and why the world could be moving towards a gold standard. Okay, hold on one second. Let's ring the bell. We got 100 thumbs up. That means 10 rings of the bell. Are you ready, basement? I haven't called you a basement dweller yet today. When you're in the basement, you're a basement dweller. And don't forget, I'm going to give you a little pump speech, okay? Yeah, I'm a silver pumper. I better start pumping it today, right? Down 75 cents. Nonetheless, you are important. Each and every one of you. Yes, you. You, right now, who's joining us. You, right? You mean a lot to a lot of people in the world. You got a good brain on your shoulders. The very fact that we're here right now is like an utter miracle, right? I mean, what are the odds? I think they say like one in 15 trillion. Okay. So it's a big deal. Be good to yourself. Be good to those around you. I'm going to ring the bell for you. All right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Okay. My friend, Peter Grandage, you know, Peter Grandage, Wall Street legend sent me an email last night and it said, you got to watch this video. There's a woman. Her name is Kathleen Tyson. I'll put a link to this video in the description as well. I have two links today. Super intelligent lady. She worked for the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. She's done it all in high finance. And I don't mean high finance like she worked for Goldman Sachs, which we know they're all watching right now. They're basement dwellers. Hello, trading desk at Goldman Sachs. This is where you come for the real info, I know. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, this Kathleen Tyson worked for the New York Federal Reserve. She worked for big central banks all around the world. She knows not the world banking system, right? She understands that, but she understands it from the most sophisticated level, the world like central banking system, setting up these big monetary systems. And it's unbelievable what she had to say. Let me just run through some notes 80% of global transactions were in U.S. dollars in the year 2021. 87%. Can you believe that? Does that seem 80, almost 90, 9 out of 10 global transactions in 2021, U.S. dollars. Something broke in 2022. OK, and now we have like 80 plus countries that are banding together this is what she said in saying, sorry, no more. You've heard that term, de-dollarization. You know what that will mean for the silver price and the gold price, okay? We're talking about what's going on right now is a new global monetary order. She brings up the fact, the most recent, the current order, the one that's been in place, was in 19, started in 1944, after World War II. Bretton Woods. It was a meeting, an agreement. We were on the gold standard. But at that time, the United States 
uh, controlled 80% of all the gold in the world. Did you know that? I did not know that. Thank you for the super chat, Leanne. Wow. One scoop of ice cream and one cup of coffee. Yeah, that ice cream parlor I went to in Orange Beach, it was like $12 a scoop. I was like, what? What is this made out of, silver or gold? Thank you for the super chat. Super appreciated. They do go a long way to help support the channel and the family. But I didn't know that the United States, after World War II, controlled 80% of all the gold in the world and that we were over half of the world gross domestic product, okay? We ruled the world. Now it's changed. Asia has more than half the people, half the economy. They're growing and they want their own system. She's talking about what is emerging right now is being called multi-currency mercantilism, okay? What happened in 2022, remember when everything changed were the Russian sanctions, okay? That's what really set all these countries off saying, wait a minute, if the United States wants us to use dollars, but then if we don't do, if we do something they don't agree with, they can just take all our dollars. That changed everything. The other key thing that happened was China trading oil for yuan, our friends in China, right? Agreements with the Saudi Arabians, agreements with the other Middle Eastern countries that they will buy oil in Chinese currency directly. That's the petrodollar. We've talked about that ad nauseum, the dollar. In 1971, the mid-70s went from being backed by gold to being backed by oil. And that is, guys, things, big changes are afoot, okay? She points out, okay, that the, that the transitions can be gradual and stable, but it's happening no matter what this is happening. They can be gradual or stable or, and I don't want to scare you, they can happen very quickly because of war. All right, now, do we have the potential for that right now? We have a war in Europe. We have a war in the Middle East. We have a potential powder keg with China and Taiwan. Let's hope for the good of humanity that we're beyond the war thing and that we can have a gradual transition. But we're moving, and we're going to get into this. <laughs> Don't you worry, basement dwellers. This is all moving to a new monetary system that will likely be backed by silver and gold. And we're going to dive into that. And you know what that'll mean for the silver price and the gold price. But first, let's thank our sponsors, Pimbex, online bullion dealer. If you want to get your hands on some gold, silver, or platinum right now, like the Chinese are <coughs> buying gold, buying silver like never before, if you want to get it, right, check out Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. It's an online website where you can buy silver and gold. Now, you want to make sure you trust whoever you're buying silver and gold from. Do your own due diligence. I can tell you that I've bought silver from Pimbex. I bought silver from Pimbex long before they sponsored the channel. I also love their prices. I also love their customer service. And they always have what I'm looking for. I'm a stacker, right? So I like ounces. Sometimes maybe 10 ounce bar, sometimes maybe some sovereign coins, whatever the case may be. They always have plenty of selection. Now, we know what happened during the banking crisis. Let's get off on a tangent here very quickly. For those of you who didn't see this, I have something shocking I want to show you. Hold on one second. Let me go to the box. The box, there, there it is. See, I'm prepared. Everything's going smoothly this morning. Can you guys still see me and hear me? This live stuff, uh-oh, can you see me? Hello, hello? Can you, okay, somebody give me a five by five. All right, here, remember, this, this, is, this is a chart that shows all the bank failures from 2003 to 2023. It's a 20 year chart of bank failures. All right, this is 2007. See how many failed? Look at all that, $500 billion. Oh my God, the financial crisis. Oh, this is what happened just 10 months ago. Even more, okay? And all, this is about Pimbex, it's about bricks. It's about the gold and silver standard. It's about all that. But remember, when that happened, you couldn't get silver and gold. So if you want to get your hands on some now, look, I'm not giving financial advice, but 
consider Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. I think Pimbex is best. I think you will too. You will get more metal for your money at Pimbex. Same metal you can get anywhere else, but you get more of it for each of those paper, toilet paper, fiat dollars that you may or may not decide to convert to metal. Okay, now back to the bricks. Back to the bricks. Where was I? Okay, this is what's interesting about these BRICS countries. And we're going to talk about the BRICS expansion. We're going to talk about the BRICS, gold-backed, silver-backed currency. It's very interesting, okay? But the, the BRICS countries are interesting. They don't, you know that the H word? I think we all need to remember and memorize the H word. Hegemon, hegemon, hegemony, hegemony. That means like one world power, one dominant, one bully, one leader, whatever you want to call it. One country that has so much power that they can dictate what other countries do. They can, can control a lot of what's going on around the world. What's interesting about these BRICS countries is they made it very clear. They don't want a, hege a, hege a hegemony. <laughs> I can't even say it. The H word. I'm just going to call it the H word. They don't want the H word. They don't want a bully. They don't want, they're not saying we want China to rule the world. We want Russia to, no, they're not saying that. Actually, the Chinese have said, look at our 5,000 year history. We've never wanted to dominate the world. Look at China. This is, this is kind of good news. Think about this. And I'm not pro-China by any stretch of the imagination, but this is just a fact. China built a wall around their country. Okay, <laughs> if they wanted to leave their borders and control more, they wouldn't have put up a wall. They built a wall around their country. So these countries don't want, they don't want colonialism. Are you hearing that word? Right? Have you, I'm, I'm hearing that word mentioned more and more times lately. Colonialism, right? This like idea. And remember what we, what, what, what were you if you're joining me from America? And I'm sure darn happy you're joining me. Thank you for being here. I'm going to put out one of these videos every day for the rest of my life. Seriously, you can feel like you have a new friend, and you do have a new friend. Come back to the basement. All you got to do is subscribe. We are trying to get to 34,000 subscribers by Valentine's Day, and I'm hoping my little heart doesn't get broken. But nonetheless, nonetheless, these countries, okay, they don't want this colonial system that's in place. Do you remember grade school? Right? We were taught about the colonial period in the United States, the Revolutionary War. Thank you for that super chat, Frank. I see you. <laughs> the five new countries spell. I'm going to see if I can get that, if I can figure that one out. Thank you, Frank T. Thank you for the super chat. We didn't want colonialism in this country. So I can kind of understand why a lot of these countries are like, we don't like this colonial type system that's been in place, okay? Um, it's interesting, but what's good, the good news in this, like I said, is that none of them really want to be like the world superpower, rah, rah, rah. So we're in good shape in that regard. Globalization can accelerate if a new monetary system comes into place, right? Why are the world central banks buying gold so they can have gold backing, so they can trade amongst? They don't trust each other's currencies, but they do trust gold. Think about it. Silver. Think about it. Oil. Think about it. Other real assets. But gold and silver in particular. Countries like Russia, Syria, Venezuela, all these countries that have been sanctioned and controlled by the United States are now working to deal with each other and trade amongst themselves. And what's interesting is these countries are all holders of gold, okay? Let's talk about the BRICS, okay? Uh, so Frank said the five new countries. Let's, let's see if I can get this right. I see you. Boy, I have to remember them. I remember them like this. Yeah, Iran, Saudi Arabia, um, Egypt, Ethiopia, and... Uh, United Arab Emirates. That's right. It is ICU. I-S-E-E-U. Those are the five new countries. We had Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Now we have, I can't do it, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates all joining forces. This is a big deal. It doubled, okay? 
are we moving to this world gold standard, silver standard? Argentina did drop out, right? They got this new president. He's going to go with the United States, all right? So we'll see. We'll see if that was a smart decision or a, a bad decision for him as time goes on here. But Russia is chairing the BRICS this year. Uh, the BRICS before, this is, the, I didn't realize this. Before we add the five new countries, this is the BRICS of 2023, their combined GDPs were bigger than the G7, okay? They have their own BRICS bank. They're all working on de-dollarizing. Their emphasis is on the energy sector, okay? Their geopolitical and their geopolitical relationships. They want to develop these good relationships. They're developing a new parallel financial system with a focus on commodities. What else are they all doing? They're all buying silver and gold, okay? Now, what's even crazier? So look, think, let's think about this. 2023, the original BRICS, their economies combined were bigger than the G7 combined. Now we've added the five. I'm not going to go through them again. But on top of the five that already joined, there's almost 40 other countries that want to join the BRICS that have explicitly said, we want to be part of this. Let's take a step back. Let's have a cup of, a sip of coffee and think about how much the world is changing. I want you to think while we drink. Forty additional countries joining the BRICS. The BRICS love silver and gold. The current BRICS, not the current, the past BRICS of 2023, bigger economies than the G7 combined. Forty new countries wanting to join. And then the last thing that we want to think about when we're thinking about the BRICS, right? Besides the fact that they all they all love gold and silver, Joe. All right, there's another thing going on. Just think back how far this has come in the last two or three years. It's unbelievable. It's happening, okay? And all over the world, we're seeing a movement to gold and silver. Now, let's talk about, let's go back to our friend, what Kathleen Tyson was talking about. And remember, this woman set up monetary systems all around the world, okay? What she's saying about gold, because she first mentions that last year we're seeing things like Ghana, right? Buying oil for gold. Interesting, huh? And when Ghana announced that, they'd been having horrific inflation troubles in their country. But when they announced that, when Ghana announced that, their inflation problem subsided substantially. It worked, right? Because gold and silver have been real money, real value for thousands of years. Let's say thank you. I need to say thank you to our other channel sponsor, Fortuna Silver. Speaking of Africa, they've got major things going on in Africa. They have a mine in Burkina Faso, a mine in Cote d'Ivoire that is doing very, very well. And in Senegal, they just picked up a huge piece of property. We think of Africa uh, in America, I think, uh, uh, not accurately. There's a lot of economy going on in Africa, big economy. And West Africa, if you combine those countries, they're like one of the world's biggest gold producing regions in the world. Very advanced and very, very exciting what is going on in Africa. Hey, look, thank you to Fortuna for sponsoring the channel. They're traded on the New York Stock Exchange, FSM. I'm not giving financial advice. It is a stock that I've owned for years and years and years, long before they graciously sponsored the channel. I'm just sharing with you what I know about the company. Check them out, fortunasilver.com. Now, hey, we're almost to 200 thumbs up girls and boys. You know, I was talking this morning uh, with a guy named J.P. Cortez from the Sound Money Defense League about all the big changes going on here in the United States on a state-by-state -state basis with, with legal tender legislation. We had a great conversation. You'll be able to hear it here in a couple of days. I'll publish it. But we talked about, and he agreed, there's more and more women coming into the stacking community. 
okay, which is awesome. And this guy is 30 years old. And he, I asked him, are younger people? Absolutely. But I, I want to, I just want to, I want to point this out. You, I know you, you're a stacker. You've got some silver and gold. Individuals are stacking silver and gold. They're being their own central bank. You're protecting yourself, right? Individual states in the United States are reclaiming the constitutional right to use silver and gold as legal tender. The individual states are saying enough is enough. On a national basis, there's nothing going on because it's controlled by the Federal Reserve and the unicorn fart dust dollar. But on a worldwide basis, which is what we're going to talk about here, after I ring the cowbell, we know that it's moving to silver and gold. And wait till you hear what this woman, Kathleen, had to say, but first... An integral part of the show. You did it. You got us to 200 thumbs up. Let's ring the cowbell. Here's your warning. One, two, three. Bell time. One more for Jake. All right. Yeah, you might be wondering about that bucket behind me that says gold stocks on it. That's my uh, barf bucket for when the gold stocks go in the in the tank, and they've been doing that, so I pulled that out. Uh, hopefully, that will be gone soon. Now, what would happen if the world went back to a gold standard? What if we never left the gold standard for real? What if the world, what if those BRICS countries forced the United States, right, <laughs> to go back to the gold standard. Because that's, you know, we already know their combined economies are bigger. They're growing. They love silver and gold. They're essentially, right, their central banks buying over and over are backing with silver and gold. Let me tell you what, what Kathleen said. She said the gold standard is a brilliant way to control inflation. Why don't we tell... Our friend Gomer Powell, our Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve that. A brilliant way to control inflation. She brought up the, the example of Campbell's soup. If you look at a chart of the price of a Campbell's, I think, tomato soup can, it was pretty steady in real terms up until 1971 when President Nixon temporarily took us off the gold standard and then it shot through the roof, okay? The gold standard is a basis of international monetary discipline it tethers it doesn't allow governments to print money at will right it 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 enforces discipline onto these countries onto these governments it also keeps them from going on wars printing money to go on endless wars which we're not in favor of war well i'm not anyway gold returns oh this is this is this is great this is the nugget of it all. This is the big, the big, what I think, one key thing that was a new light bulb that went off inside my head. There's still a few light bulbs up there that haven't been lit up. <laughs> the older we get, right? The more we know we don't know and we can learn. She called gold uh, the, the, hegemon the hegemonic asset, right? We talked about how the BRICs don't want a, a hegemony power in the world. The gold is the world power, and it can be shared amongst a number of different countries. Think about that. Has gold ever lost its value over time? No. Has gold been powerful over time? Yes. Can gold be the world hegemonic power? I say yes. Silver, yes. Okay, absolutely. China is hurling there's a cartoon of Ch the Chinese throwing stacks of $100 bills. China's hurling dollars back at the United States. And what's the United States doing? We are hurling gold back to China, silver back to China. They're sucking in all of our precious metals, okay? They're buying gold not U.S. treasuries. We know that, okay? Right now, as a matter of fact, China's treasury holdings 
are as low as they were in the year 2008. Okay, reduce their exposure to almost just 800 billion. China is also announcing their gold purchases to the world. It used to be a real secret. Now they're uh, they're opening up and saying this is how much gold we're buying. All right, and people think they actually have a lot more than they admit. Okay, central banks. This is this comes from an ex Federal Reserve person. Central banks around the world are buying, and they are the insiders. Sometimes we say, oh, they're the most sophisticated financial institutions in the world, the central banks. But she calls them, and I think rightfully so, the insiders. They have the inside information, right? Who knows more about what's going on in the world financial system than the world central bankers? I'm not going to lie to you. I don't, okay? Okay. But a central banker uh, in Holland or a central banker in Germany or a central banker in Sao Paulo or a central banker in Singapore or a single central banker in Shanghai, wherever their central banks are, they know. They know. They have the inside information about what's going on, okay? And then on top of that, we need to realize also as the system, this new parallel system develops that we have so much debt, the debt in the world is crazy. Countries are going to go back to the real McCoy, the real, uh, uh, the real assets. Better is possible, this is the good news, and more equitable distribution of wealth throughout the world. Right, and if we have the when the gold when when gold that th this this is how I see what's going on, and I know you a lot of you don't agree with me on this, but I will argue that the world never really went off the gold and silver standard. Sure, we had little mirages, little smoke and mirror fun houses that the Fed pulled off all that, but the gold and silver have always been there as the steady base of everything and as the world uh as, as as gold becomes reclaims reclaims this hegemon hegemony hegemonic power that it has right it can create an atmosphere of prosperity and um better world for everyone out there i mean really what we're doing as gold and silver enthusiasts are you feeling this i believe I absolutely believe that what we're doing can help the world, can make the world a better, more fair place. Because that's why Nixon took us off the gold standard in 71. So he could pay for what? A war, for the Vietnam War, right? I mean, we could make the world could become a much, much, much better place. Do you feel it? I think it. I'm going to ask you, this is a participatory, a participatory show. If you think this could make the world a better place, let's see it. Type better, because I think it is. And I think that what we're doing, I've never heard anybody, any of you basement dwellers ever say anything like mean or violent, or we should go destroy these people, or we should do anything like that. I think that we're good, solid people. All we want is this, right? Look, what is that? That's a one ounce silver round. That actually came from my good friend, Coin Shop Chris. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris. Right? That's a battery that stores value. Do you have any of these? Do you have any of these one ounce silver rounds? Maybe you have a 10 ounce bar, you lucky dog, right? It's a battery. It's not storing electricity. Right. Well, we know silver, right, is the most conductive of electricity, thermally conductive. It's antimicrobial. It has all these awesome qualities, but it's also a store of value. How? Do, look at the other side. That's no, a buffalo. Yeah, there's a buffalo butt for you. He doesn't have any clothes on. Um, you know, if your great grandpa left you, think about your great grandpa for a second. You maybe you met him, maybe maybe you didn't. But if your great grandpa left a an envelope in a safe, right, and that safe just got opened today, sixty years later, and he could have either put five silver dollars in that envelope or five paper dollars. Which would you have read? Because they were worth the same thing back then. Which would you have rather he left for you? Those five paper dollars, you'd be lucky to get yourself one Big Mac. Those five silver dollars. Heck, you could buy yourself what? 
30 or 40 Big Macs. I mean, guys, there's no question about, uh, about, the, about the ability of silver and gold to act as, and this is another interesting thing that we don't talk about enough, about, about it being the basis for a more equitable uh, money system. Because the reality is inflation steals money from the middle class. Inflation steals money from people that work and try to save. You know, if you come to my house today and uh, install a new toilet for me, and I pay you $100 <coughs> for doing it, okay, $100 cash, and you want to hold on to that money for five years, who knows what that $100 bill is going to be worth? It'll still be a $100 bill in five years, right? And I'm sure it likely will still have some value, but how much value related to what it's worth today, which has already been diminished uh, significantly. But if I give you three ounces of silver, say thank you for putting that new toilet in, right? and you hold on to it for five years, which do you think is going to have more value in five years? I know on days like today, when the market's getting killed, it doesn't feel like that, right? And I know, actually, if we look back even the last two or three years, but if you, if you can broaden your horizon and apply common sense to the fundamental factors that support the value of silver and gold and all the smoke in mirrors, the unicorns, the whatever they throw out there from the if if you can if you can filter out the noise, you can see that silver and gold hold their value. There's no other way to there's really no other way to look at it. So it's interesting times in which we live. Uh, I want to ask you guys to do one thing for me right now. The moderators are great on this channel. They're much appreciated, right? I appreciate everybody that comes here, but the moderators are working to make this the show that it is. Type some eights, because eight is great for those moderators. Thank you, moderators. Okay, Coin Shop Chris, Jim M, Sassy Silver. I don't know if I saw Jake here today or not, but uh, it really, really helps. Oh my gosh. All right, are we going to do it, guys? What do you say, folks? Right? Remember. Remember you, you silver stacker, I know you're out there. Let's have some fun. Let's do the 300 thumbs up channel challenge. <laughs> Can we get the 300 thumbs up? Because then we do what we all love. See that right there where my finger is? It's kind of hard to see it. It's a gong. I will ring the gong three times. Let's see if we can't make that happen. Bear with me just one second. Let me pull out the bag of tricks. Hmm. Let me pull out the bag of tricks. The Great Taking documentary is definitely worth watching. Okay? Again, this guy is credentialed. He's smart. And apparently, you know, apparently our money in the bank is not really our money. The car that you may have paid cash for, He's saying even isn't really your car, okay? When I think of the solution to this idea that because of financial trickery and legal trickery, they could take all of our assets is, I mean, I hate to go back to this, uh, but I don't hate to, but I can't think of anything that that is the biggest challenge to them doing that as, as, as or, the, or the solution for me and you is physical metals, right? If... You don't hold it, you don't own it type mentality. Um, it really is kind of a scary situation uh, to think that they've put this in place. We'll have to, we'll have to see how that, uh, how, that, how that plays out, okay? Yes, we're having more and more female stackers. To all the female stackers that are here today, thank you for joining us, okay? 20 years ago, it was different. We didn't have as many women in the stacking community. Women are absolutely, and you know that, right? Welcome, and you're always welcome here in Ron's Basement. As a matter of fact, June 14th, I've designated as International Women's Silver Day. So we're going to do something special for that. We've got a lot of more and more women that are joining the Ron's Basement community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know, guys. Remember, 
I want you to remember one thing as we are going through a challenging day in the market. Let's do an update. Let me do an update on the silver and gold price. Be prepared, because I know it's not good. <laughs> Should we do silver first? Here we go, Kitco. Silver is down 75 cents in the spot market, $22.91. Let's take a look at gold. I'm thinking 24, 25, who knows? $26 per ounce right now in the spot market. $2,032 per ounce. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm, it's horrible. And it does stink. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely does stink. We need to get the 300 thumbs up. Can we do it, guys? Huh? Please. It's like right down there. It looks like a thumb. You press it. <laughs> it's like it's free. It's like a virtual hug to your fellow basement dwellers. Let's just remember something. Let me look. Uh, let's look at. Let's look at where. This, these new Kitco charts are hard to navigate, but I can tell you from memory that about a year ago right now, we were still in that 1800 range for the gold price. Bear with me. Let's go back and look and see where we were a year ago um, in the gold price. Hold on here. Woo, technical problems. Here we go. And the general markets, I mean, are getting killed today, too. Um, let's look at Bitcoin real quickly, down 5%. Gold down 1.5%. In the futures market, it's at 2,040. But, yeah, one year ago right now, we were, let's say, about, we were about $200 per ounce lower. Okay? So we were about 1850 per ounce. Today, we're at, let's say, 2050. What's going to be critical as we move into, you know, this next couple of weeks is that we hold $2,000. Do you agree with me on that or not? When it comes to gold, silver will follow. But if we hold this $2,000 and once we get, I'm telling you, silver is going to explode once we get above $2,100 uh, in the gold price. Silver will explode. Be ready. Right now, we get to ring the gong. 300 thumbs up. Whoop. There it is. The old golden gong from our friend Stu. Hold on. I'm going to hold this. I'm going to give you some good rings today. I don't, I don't understand why it keeps ringing. Listen, I'm going to do it one more time. It takes like five seconds to stop making noise. <laughs> I never really thought about that. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see how this, how this all plays out. Hold on here. We got a few more fun things we can chat about. All right. Yeah. I'm looking back. Our notes. We knew this was going to happen early in the year. I'm telling you, they wanted to kneecap the gold price and the silver price at the beginning of the year. They want to take the wind out of the sails. Everybody was talking about, and yes, I'll raise my hand. I was somewhat guilty of it as well, about how 2024 was going to be the year for the gold price and the silver price. We even had JP Morgan. J.P. Morgan, not our friends at Goldman Sachs, who I know are joining us right now, but J.P. Morgan talking about $2,300 gold, right? Silver, we know, right? We, they, 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 they attack gold, and by default, silver gets attacked as well, right? So we knew that this was going to happen. I, I warned you guys several times over the last week that I had a feeling early in the year they were going to attack the gold price. And the, we're two days into the year, guys. Two days. It's a long, long year ahead. We'll see how it all how it all plays out. I mean, um, everything in this country right now is screwy. We know that. We've established that, 
as things get uh, as as events come to fruition, let's let's just let's just think about this for a second. Domestically, monetarily, fiscally, the consumer, right? Record credit card debt, record uh, uh, student loan debt, record car debt, record mortgage debt, uh, no savings, right? Pulling money out of their four hundred one k. The political, social situation in this country. I don't want to be negative, but it's just, it is what it is, and it really stinks. It's really rancid what's going on right now in this country domestically. That's a very supportive factor for the precious metals price. But then let's just do one more thing. Let's zoom out. I know we're Americans. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I think a lot of our fellow Americans are guilty of it. We think like we think Africa is a country, <laughs> most Americans. And I got to be honest, if I don't think about it, I usually do too. Africa is a continent. I mean, we don't think of the world. So think about what's going on with the United States and then think about what's going on with the world. Think about both of them within the context of precious metals. In the world, we've got the BRICS that just expanded, that's going to expand more that's expanding their usage of silver and gold amongst themselves that are hoarding silver and gold. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think what it boils down to is you want to protect yourself, but you also want to protect your family, right? Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I could be dead wrong on all this, okay? I don't think I am. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm very personally feel very convicted and confident when I can say that I believe silver and gold and potentially, and I have to say, hopefully for my case, precious metals mining stocks will protect us as we move into what is going to be a very challenging period, right? Is it going to happen this afternoon? No. Is it going to happen this week? You know, who knows? You know how these things kind of unfold. And if we just look back at the recent momentum of things going on in the world, there's no, there's no, things are happening much more quickly. I heard somebody the other day say things that seemed like they used to happen once every five years are happening every month now, right? They're happening much more quickly and at a much more escalated level. So we are going to be, um, I guess, together here is one place where we can congregate and, and prepare to navigate through what are going to be some potentially challenging times um, and, and, and be prepared monetarily and mentally for what could come. I mean, Kathleen Tyson, you got watch. Well, go watch the video. I, I believe I was successful. I was kind of challenged, technically, putting the link in the description. It's 12 minutes long, and and it's not really. She does a. She's a super central banker type person, but she makes it very understandable. The world is changing. Okay. The world is changing. No, they aren't going to tell you about it on Netflix. And yes, I watch Netflix. No, they aren't going to tell you about it when you go to your local bank. Okay? I go to my local bank, right? But we are we are exceptional in that we're willing to take a step outside the box, think outside the box, pull our head out of the sand, I think is a better way to say it, and see what's going on. And the good news in all this guys, is that really, I believe that if silver and gold, um, uh, I don't want to say reclaim, because I don't think they ever really, like, when, when, as they're recognized more as the true real money, right, that the world can actually become a much more peaceful PNP, right? We talk about being monetarily and mentally m and &M, but that with silver and gold as the foundation, the tether of the world's economy, that the world can become a much more peaceful and prosperous place for all of us to live. I mean, maybe you have kids. I have kids. Maybe you have grandkids. Maybe you have nieces and nephews. Maybe if you have, I know one thing for sure about you. If you're here watching, right, all 400 plus of you right now, you got one thing. You got a heart that's beating and everybody and the people that come here are nice, kind people. You want 
what's good for the people in whatever your community is. And I think that silver and gold can help provide that, be a, a, a conduit for a lot of good. I'm Boy, I'm really getting off onto the onto the uh, preaching side. If Susie was home, she'd tell me to shut up. So I'll shut up, okay? I want you to have a great day. Thank you for everything. Thank you to the moderators, okay? And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.